It all started with a naturalist named Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Elder was born in either 23 or 24 AD as Gaius Polinius Secundus. He studied law in Rome, served in the military, then traveled through much of the old Roman Empire and eventually rose to become a commander. In his later years, Pliny the Elder traveled around the world and wrote natural history, trying to understand as much of the natural world around him as possible. And this was when he allegedly discovered a mermaid. It was in Western Europe that Pliny the Elder heard whispers of a human-like creature with fish scales found washed up on the beaches. He began to write factual accounts of mermaids. A lot of what we understand about mermaids today actually comes from Pliny the Elder, who was considered to be a serious naturalist. He wrote accounts of mermaids climbing onto ships and sinking them, of mermaids washing up on the shore, and of one particularly spooky mermaid that was spotted in Gaul, which is modern France. Unfortunately, none of the sightings have ever actually been substantiated. But what's really strange is that the mermaid is the only mythical creature that Pliny the Elder ever wrote of in his books on the natural world, making you wonder why he thought mermaids were real if he actually hadn't seen one. Number 9. The 1967 Main Island Mermaid it was 1967 in British Columbia, Canada. There were passengers on board a ferry traveling through Active Pass near Main Island who witnessed a mermaid. The sighting was shared by several witnesses who claimed to have seen a mermaid eating a salmon and sitting on a rock. According to a report in the Daily Colonist that came out the day after the sighting, witnesses saw a woman with blonde hair, no top on her body, and the tail of a beautiful fish. And they saw her taking a bite out of a salmon and eating it raw. Witnesses claim that she had the lower body of either a fish or a porpoise, which matches pretty well with what a mermaid should look like. Someone even managed to get a photograph of the mermaid, though there have been disputes as to just how real this picture is. The woman in the photo is obviously a mermaid, and is actually the only relatively legitimate photo of a mermaid that's ever been taken. After the event, the Colonist newspaper offered a reward of $25,000 for anyone who could capture the mermaid. Unfortunately, this mermaid was never captured, nor was she ever seen again. What would somebody do with a mermaid if they captured it anyway? Huh. Number 8. The Israeli Mermaid The most recent mermaid sighting came from the small Israeli town of Kiryat Yam in 2011. A mermaid that witnesses said looked like a fish mixed with a young girl began to appear at sunset, performing tricks before disappearing into the surf. Was it the real-life Ariel? Curious about what is happening on dry land? According to one eyewitness, the mermaid was lying in the sand in a weird way at first, and the man and his friends simply thought it was a woman. But when they approached, she jumped into the water and disappeared. Every person present agreed that she had a tail. Naturally, the town was ecstatic to have their very own mermaid. The government offered a reward of $1 million for the first person to get a real photograph of the creature. But just like in Canada, almost 50 years earlier, not a single person managed to snap a photograph of the mermaid. It just wasn't happening. Some experts then claim the mermaid was either a hoax or an optical illusion. Maybe the power of suggestion coerced tourists into believing they saw a mermaid when what they probably saw was nothing at all. In the end, the myth of the Israeli mermaid lost traction and everyone forgot about it. Do you think the Israeli Ariel is still out there? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 7. The Ugly Mermaid The Fiji mermaid was advertised in the 1840s as a true mermaid from South America. It was initially displayed at a concert hall in New York City in the summer of 1842. People walking into the exhibition thought they were going to come face to face with a beautiful woman who had the tail of a fish or a dolphin. What they witnessed instead was a grotesque monstrosity with hair sprouting out of its bony head, its lips pulled back, and its sharp teeth threatening and disturbing. The mermaid had a skeletal torso with a scary fish-like body and scales. The stunted creature was only about three feet. To understand why this disgusting monster was so fascinating in the 1800s, we first need to look at why it was called the Fiji Mermaid. Back in the 1800s, Americans thought Fiji was a place filled with savagery and cannibals, and even goblins and apparently mermaids. This was a time when monsters could still exist, and most people were easily fooled into thinking they did. Museum entrepreneur P.T. Barnum used this to his advantage and made a fortune off displaying the Fiji Mermaid. 
But of course, this was not a real mermaid. It probably came from Japan in the 17th century. It has been used as a sideshow attraction for almost 200 years. It had been put on display in London in 1822, but was quickly removed when a trusted surgeon declared the mermaid was nothing more than an orangutan cut in half with its body stitched onto a fish. But the Americans didn't care, and they went on ogling over the mermaid until the 1860s. Number 6. John Smith and the Mermaid John Smith was one of the earliest people to claim he saw a mermaid. Yes, this is the same John Smith known for his daring rescue of Pocahontas. But before Pocahontas, John Smith was a sailor in the Caribbean. He allegedly had an encounter with a mermaid in 1614, describing the creature in his own words as being a woman with green hair that he saw swimming in the water and that was by no means unattractive. When John saw the woman turn away and dive below the waves, he noticed she had a fishtail and was actually a mermaid. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, that's exactly how the story of John Smith and the mermaid went. But it's possible that John Smith never actually saw the mermaid. Historian Von Scribner has recently argued that John Smith never recorded the mermaid encounter himself, and that it was written at a different time by a different person. Here's where the evidence comes from. All historians agree that John Smith was not actually in the Caribbean waters in 1614. He was there in 1607, and yet every story of him meeting a mermaid is from 1614. The dates just don't add up. Number 5. Mermaid Manatees Mermaids are real. Unfortunately, they may not be exactly how we picture them. The truth is that mermaids may actually be sea cows, also known as manatees. When Christopher Columbus got in his boat and set out in 1492, he recorded one of the first mermaid sightings in the New World. He claimed that he saw a very ugly woman swimming through the water, slightly overweight and with a big tail. What Christopher Columbus actually saw was probably a manatee. No wonder he thought the mermaid was ugly. Manatees don't look anything like human women. They don't look like human anything. However, if Christopher Columbus was a bit exhausted from standing on a boat all day, if it was a little rainy outside, and if he was feeling a little lonely, there is a pretty good chance he confused a manatee with the person, thus single-handedly starting the myth of the mermaid in North America. What do you think? Do you think you could confuse a manatee with a mermaid? Number 4. The Exeter Mermaid There is a legendary tale from England in which a mermaid was discovered in the waters of Exeter. The story comes from 1737, when fishermen drew in a net and discovered a creature shaped an awful lot like a human. It had two legs and leaped out of their net and then ran away. But this mermaid was a bit different than what you'd typically imagine. Instead of having a fish tail, the mermaid had webbed feet like a duck. It also wasn't female. Instead, it was a merman. <coughs> merman. Zoolander, anyone? The fisherman also claimed that it had a tail coming out of its rear and that it was only about 4 feet or 1.2 meters in height. A similar creature was then spotted in 1823 in the exact same area. It was described as having two legs with animal features. This time, the creature was apparently knocked down and killed by the confused onlookers who then just disposed of the body. Nonetheless, there has been no archaeological evidence of a creature matching the description found in the area. All we have is a legend passed down over 200 years. Number 3. Japanese Mermaids The stories of mermaids in Japan are quite fascinating and very different from other places in the world. In Japan, mermaids are not beautiful women who bewitch sailors. Instead, they are fishy monsters with golden scales the mouth of a monkey, sharp teeth, and a voice like a screeching bird. Oh, and they have delicious flesh for eating. Plus, anyone who eats a Japanese mermaid is said to live for an exceptionally long time. In Japan, a mermaid is known as a ninyo, which translates roughly to human fish. When a ninyo is caught, it is supposed to bring misfortune and storms. That's why most fishermen throw the ninyo back into the water whenever they accidentally catch them. It was also once believed that if a ninyo washed ashore, it would be an omen of calamity or war. There is a Japanese legend that tells a tale of how the mermaid first appeared at Lake Biwa to Prince Shotoku. When the prince was on the brink of death, the mermaid told him a sad story. 
Apparently, the creature was once a fisherman who sailed through prohibited waters. As punishment, she turned into a hideous animal. The Ningyo, wanting to atone for her transgression, asked the prince to build a temple to display her remains as an example of the sacredness of life. And he did. The temple is known as the Tenshao Kyosha Shrine. What's really fascinating about Japanese mermaids is that they could actually be real creatures. It's not that far-fetched to think that there's some kind of fish-like monkey monster living in the ocean, and that the Japanese made up stories about it. I mean, look at all the other bizarre-looking fish that have been captured or seen in the planet's oceans. Though, of course, there has never been a Nino found in modern times. Number 2. South Africa's Mermaid in 2008, the legendary South African mermaid, a beast known as the Kaiman, was spotted near a small village. The residents of this village have believed in the creature for generations. This most modern sighting even worked to convince the most skeptical residents that the monster is indeed real. The sighting happened when a group of friends was spending their day relaxing next to the river. Somebody heard a disturbing sound, all the friends looked over, and that was when they saw the figure of a pale white woman with long black hair splashing violently in the water. Somebody ran into the water to save the woman, thinking she was in trouble, but they stopped when they witnessed a red glow in the woman's eyes. They realized it was the legendary Kaiman, a monster so horrible that it eats the flesh of children. Then the group ran away. Now the villagers believe the Kaiman was trying to lure the young friends into the river to kill them. Experts are obviously skeptical about the sighting, but those in the area know that it's something the villagers take very seriously. It's even something they greatly consider when going anywhere near the water. Number 1. The Hawaiian Mermaid just a few years ago, reports of a dead mermaid being found at a beach in Hawaii set the internet ablaze. The initial reports claimed that the mermaid's body was found, but she had already passed away. The photographs that surfaced online were absolutely convincing. It really did look like a dead mermaid. She had fish-like skin, a human face, blonde hair, and a mermaid tail. Nobody knew just where this mermaid had come from or how she even existed in the first place. But then reports started coming in that the same mermaid was found in other places around the world, including Egypt. It became a little suspicious. The creature with a fish tail and human head was starting to look like a hoax. And as it turned out, it absolutely was a hoax. The mermaid body was actually crafted by the artist Juan Cabana. It was a completely fake sculpture made to look like a true mermaid, but it was just a prop. One that had actually been used in the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. As far as we know, there has never actually been a mermaid corpse found anywhere on Earth at any point in history. Vehicle after a devastating accident at a boat launch. This happened at Blaine Harbor in Blaine, Washington, which is just across the US Canada border. The woman and her vehicle were totally submerged beneath a boat. At 7.20 a.m. on the morning of a boat launch, a 911 call was made by the boaters as they had just discovered something shocking. They reported to the officers that they had discovered a fully submerged vehicle just after launching their own boat. Soon afterwards, officers and local rescue divers swiftly rushed to the scene. It was then that one of the rescue divers noticed someone inside of the vehicle. Firefighters and paramedics quickly arrived to try to save the elderly woman's life. Sadly, soon after the vehicle was towed out of the harbor and all of the water was drained out, the elderly Canadian woman was pronounced dead. But just how on earth did an 87-year-old woman drown at the boat launch? After the police conducted an investigation, they concluded in their report that it's believed the 87-year-old had gotten lost while trying to drive from Kelowna, British Columbia to North Vancouver, British Columbia. After getting lost, she drove towards the US border to ask for directions. But at this point, it was late at night, and it's believed that the lost 87-year-old made a few more wrong turns and accidentally ended up at the boat launch ramp, getting caught in the rising tide and eventually totally submerged just a few hours before the Blaine Harbor public boat launch. Number 9. Fire at the Launch In the heat of a Chicago summer last year, one man was critically injured by a huge boat fire that began on a Saturday afternoon. In Burnham Harbor, a group of men were trying to start up and launch an older boat. 
They reportedly were using starter fluid to get the old boat up and running again. Maybe they used a bit too much, because all of a sudden a spark from the old boat's engine must have ignited the highly flammable liquid. At around 3.20 p.m., witnesses claimed they saw clouds of smoke coming from the boat. They also saw a man on the boat trying to put out the fire with his own fire extinguisher. But he wasn't able to put it out, and just moments later, the whole boat was completely engulfed in a terrifying giant ball of fire. Apparently, the small fire had reached one of the old boat's motors, which caused the fire to grow and spread extremely quickly. The flames reportedly reached up to 15 feet, or 4.5 meters, high. All of the other boats at the launch had to quickly turn around and wait in the harbor before being able to come back to the dock. The firefighters quickly showed up, and they were thankfully able to put out the fire by 4 p.m., before it was able to spread to the dock or any other ships. The one man on the boat trying to put out the fire with a fire extinguisher was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Luckily, he's expected to make a full recovery. The old boat, on the other hand, did not make it. Sadly, it was completely destroyed and burnt to a crisp from the fiery disaster at the Burnham Harbor. Number 8. Lifeboat Drill Gone Wrong In recent weeks, an important safety drill on a British research vessel went horribly wrong. The crew members on the research ship, which is named the RRS Sir David Attenborough, were conducting a regular safety drill. Normally, the crew members are supposed to attempt to board and launch the smaller lifeboats from the main ship as quickly as possible. However, the drill didn't go totally according to plan. Two crew members were on a lifeboat awaiting the proper deployment, when all of a sudden, something went wrong, and the lifeboat accidentally launched on its own. Since none of the crew members were ready for the launch, the lifeboat began to roll on its side and soon completely flipped over. Scary. Although the lifeboat safety drill is essential, it's one of the more risky routines that modern ships need to do. In fact, just a few months before, a similar incident occurred in Vancouver, British Columbia with a different boat, leaving two crew members significantly injured. Luckily, it was just a drill, and the RRS Sir David Attenborough was docked in Loch Bui, Scotland, instead of the frigid polar seas where it normally conducts its research. This could have been much, much worse. Thankfully, the RRS Sir David Attenborough and its crew members will survive to research the polar seas another day. But actually, this isn't even what the RRS Sir David Attenborough is best known for. When first launched, the United Kingdom government encouraged the public to pick a name for the new research vessel. The most popular option for the new boat's name was Bodie McBoatface. The United Kingdom government made the decision to not go through with the public's choice, and instead named the boat after Sir David Attenborough. Number 7. Crash on the Bayou A deadly boat crash went down on the Bayou Sara River near Gunnison Creek in Satsuma, Alabama back in 2020. This occurred at the Steel Creek boat launch. Two boats tragically crashed into one another killing one man and injuring two other people. According to a witness, an elderly man had started up his old boat and took it out for a ride. However, the old boat reportedly hadn't been used in a few years, meaning it probably wasn't in the best or safest operating condition. But this didn't stop the elderly man from taking it for a ride at full speed on the Bayou Serra. Just after launching his boat, the 21-foot or 6.5-meter 1990 Wahoo there was a brand new 16-foot or 4.8-meter 2020 Bass Tracker. On the red Bass Tracker, there was an older married couple. The captain of the Wahoo's negligence killed the man in the red Bass Tracker and severely injured two others. In fact, an emergency helicopter had to be called to lift a woman from the red Bass Tracker to take her to a hospital to treat her serious injuries. Someone should have let this guy know that you can't just start up an old boat and safely take it out for a ride after not using it for a few years. Boats need constant care and maintenance to make sure that you can ride safely on the water, without putting yourself and other boaters at risk. Unfortunately, the authorities never released whose fault the accident was or just how badly damaged the boats were. Since we know that basically everyone involved needed to be taken to the hospital for treatment, and we also know that the local Saraland Fire Department had to respond to the scene, we can assume that the boats were sadly pretty much totaled. Number 6. The $10 Million Yacht 
more like $10 million down the drain. On May 18, 2014, on Onacourt's Island, Washington, a brand new luxurious 90 foot or 27.4 meter long yacht named Baden was being launched from the Fildago Marina boat ramp. The launch was going smoothly at first, but suddenly the crew reported hearing a loud clunk accompanied by some crunching sounds. Not a good sign for this high priced vessel. For some reason, the crew convinced themselves that it was just not that big of a deal, and they continued with the ominous launch. They had hoped that the now tilted boat would simply readjust and find balance once it finished its launch and was comfortably on the water. However, pretty much the worst case scenario ended up happening instead. As the costly boat continued to be forced through the precarious launch, it began to capsize on its port side. Port just means left in boat terms. Once on its side, it began filling up with water quickly, and everyone had to evacuate. Local emergency responders arrived and helped everyone out. They even had to smash the $10 million yacht's windows to help some crew members escape the sinking boat. Thankfully, nobody died in this $10 million death machine, and all injuries were just minor cuts and scrapes. Due to the extensive water damage throughout the yacht's features and machinery, the whole thing was considered a total loss. Of course, the company who built the yacht, New World Yacht Builders, claimed that it was a problem with the launching apparatus and not the boat itself. And yeah, that's what I would claim too if I were the boat builder. But then the launching company claimed they did nothing wrong either, and that they had launched over 35 vessels from the same launch with no issues. I just hope they had insurance. Number 5. Carnival Cruise Crash At the end of December 2019, the magnificent Carnival Cruise Line ship named Glory was involved in a startling accident with another boat, the Carnival Legend. That's right, it's just about as ridiculous as you hitting your family member's car in the driveway. It was in Cozumel, Mexico, where passengers were hoping to enjoy a warm vacation without much stress. So much for that. In a horrifying video captured by those on board, the nose of the Carnival Glory made direct contact with the whole of another ship, both of which were owned by the same company. Six passengers suffered minor injuries, probably from the nose of the ship piercing the other ship like a giant spear. This was one of the slowest and loudest cruise ship disasters ever. The nose very slowly ripped apart the front end of the other ship, creating a sound like crunching metal. Neither ship was taken out of commission afterwards, but hopefully whoever was driving that ship at least had their license revoked. What would you do if you were on a cruise ship when an accident like this happened? Would you panic? Would you run for the lifeboats? Or would you whip out your phone and start taking a video? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already for more insane videos just like this one. Number 4. The SS Principessa Jolanda This massive cruise ship, which was built in Italy in the early 1900s, cost a fortune for its builders and was one of the only transatlantic vessels equipped with electric lighting and telephones inside the cabins. It was one of the most technologically advanced ships of the early 1900s, which makes what happened next all the more disappointing. On September 22nd, the ship launched in front of a massive audience, including government officials and journalists. The ship moved down the slipway, heeled sharply to port, and sank within just 20 minutes. Even with efforts by tugboats and workers at the shipyard to save the vessel from drowning, it just couldn't be done. The shining new passenger ship capsized and was swallowed by the water. Unlike the more famous sinking of the Titanic, all the guests and workers on board were able to get off the ship and escape in their lifeboats. There were absolutely no casualties. But still, it was a huge blow for Italy and a massive waste of money. As for why the ship sank in the first place, most agree its center of gravity was just too high. When the ship started healing, it took in water through the portholes, its center of gravity moved around, the ship just kept tilting deeper and deeper, and it was eventually underwater. Number 3. The Boat That Got Away A man trying to enjoy a relaxing day of boating at Smith Mountain Lake in February of 2021 ended up dead after mishandling a boat launch. The story, which took place in rural Virginia, is actually quite tragic. 
According to NBC News, a man named Richard fell into the water about 25 feet or 7 meters after launching his boat. But he wasn't actually in the boat at the time. For whatever reason, he had been pushing the boat from the boat launch into the water, and when he tried to scramble up on the boat once it was finally floating, he couldn't get on. A horrified bystander watched helplessly as Richard tried to scramble onto his vessel to absolutely no avail. The boat simply kept drifting deeper and deeper into the cove. Richard finally gave up once he started drifting too far. He turned around and tried to swim back to shore. That was when the horrified bystander entered the water to try to save him. But unfortunately, even after more bystanders got involved and they were able to drag Richard back to the shore, it was too late for him. One of the people performed CPR, a rescue squad was called to the scene, but it was all for nothing. Tragically, Richard perished that day, never to drive his boat again. Number 2. No Warnings In Chicago, there is a road that drives right into the river at Sunset Bay Marina, and over the years it's claimed the lives of several people. It's unmarked, there is no gate before it, and there is no warning. The danger here is that people unfamiliar with the area don't always know that they're driving towards a ramp that enters the water. Just recently, in November of 2019, two young men drove straight down the boat launch, crashed into the water, and died. According to CBS Chicago, this happened on a dark and rainy night when the young men had been following their GPS directions. For whatever reason, the GPS led them down a street they didn't recognize into an unlit part of the marina and straight down the unguarded and unmarked boat launch. These men didn't intend to launch a boat, but they wound up launching themselves and their car into the water. Unfortunately, without a way out of their car and without anyone to rescue them in time, the young men died at the scene. Number 1. Run Over By A Boat A woman in Kansas died in July of 2020 after being gravely injured in a boating accident that involved her literally being run over by her own boat on the ramp down into the water. According to the initial reports, the incident happened when the unidentified woman was somehow hit by her own vessel. Police reports didn't mention exactly how the accident happened, though we do know it took place around 6 p.m., the busiest time of day when boats are returning back to shore. It's possible that in the chaos of so many people coming back to the dock, the woman mishandled her own boat, lost control, and was run over by it. Even though there were a lot of people there to help the poor woman while the police were on their way, her injuries proved too much to handle. Even after she was taken to the hospital, the woman failed to recover and ultimately succumbed to her wounds. Mangroves is being destroyed right in front of our very eyes. The Everglades is in southeast Florida are threatened by rising sea level, with coastal communities in danger of flooding. The Everglades wetlands are on the verge of being completely erased by a rising, swelling ocean. According to a recent analysis from the Florida International University, much of the southeast Florida Everglades will be submerged in the next 30 years. Dr. Randall Parkinson says there's nowhere left for them to go. The sea will keep rising, and there's really nothing that can be done about it. The mangrove wetlands have been moving west away from the ocean, but when they finally hit the L31 levee, a floor barrier south of Miami, they ran out of room to expand. With nowhere to go, the mangroves will be eaten by the ocean. Regardless of whether you believe in climate change or not, there is no arguing the scientific fact that the ocean is rising three times faster than the global average at the Florida coastline. And once the mangroves are completely gone and the ocean is knocking on Florida's front door, there will be nothing stopping more brutal storms from pounding Florida, since the Everglades have been kind of a natural barrier protecting much of the state from rampaging coastal storms. Number 9. Tuvalu Tuvalu is a sinking island. Much like the Florida Everglades, it's about to be sucked into the ocean. You're probably wondering what Tuvalu is. Tuvalu is a small Polynesian country, nothing more than a speck in the Pacific Ocean halfway between Hawaii and Australia. It's the fourth smallest country in the world with only 11,000 residents. Most of the residents live on the large island of Fongafau. 
On this island, they are losing almost all of their living space. Two of the nine islands that make up the archipelago of Tuvalu are on the literal verge of sinking, and the main island is next. According to Leitu Frank, a lifelong resident of Tuvalu, the sand is literally being eaten by the sea. She's only 32 and yet remembers a time when the sand stretched very far into the distance. Now, there's barely any sand. She also remembers a time when swimming, she could see the colorful coral and the sea floor. Now the sea is cloudy like mushroom soup, and the coral is dead. Things aren't looking good for the country of Tuvalu. Eventually, they're going to need to be evacuated from their tiny island. During storms, the waves got so brutal that the island is hit from the east and the west, literally soaking the entire island. At its narrowest point, Fongofell is only 60 feet or 18 meters across. One big wave and everyone living on the island is going to be washed out to sea. Number 8. Timbuktu Timbuktu is an ancient city gradually being turned into dust. Timbuktu was once a bustling hub of trade between Africa and Arabia. It's now sitting at the edge of a desert with a water supply that's quickly disappearing and rebel fighters posing a serious threat to the area. Timbuktu is in danger because of human neglect because of the Sahara slowly blanketing the old city in sand, and because of war and greed. But a long time ago, Timbuktu was one of the jewels of Africa. The desert metropolis was filled with mango trees and golden fruit, canals to keep the air fresh, trading hubs where salt and gold were exchanged, and fabulous mosques that displayed the immense wealth of the city. It was a true marvel, with many European explorers dying just trying to find it during the 19th century. It was legendary throughout Europe and something of a myth among explorers. Some people argued that Timbuktu was so extraordinary that it probably didn't exist. These days, Timbuktu is in rebel territory. It was occupied in 2013 by Islamists linked to Al-Qaeda. You can't even reach the city unless you drive 600 miles or almost 1,000 kilometers north from the capital city of Mali Bamako. But alas, the city won't be around for much longer. Even though Timbuktu had one of the first established universities in the world back in the 12th century, with at least 25,000 students, it's now nothing but dust and will soon be completely erased by the encroaching desert. Number 7. The European Alps Europe's glaciers are almost gone. The ice which covered the European Alps is set to disappear by 2100, according to Harry Secolari, a climate scientist from Zurich. There is really nothing now that can be done to stop the European Alps from turning into boring old European mountains. By 2050, the mountains will have lost at least 50% of their volume. Scientists figured this out by using computer models and simulating over 4,000 glaciers in the European Alps. In the worst case scenario, 95% of the ice will be gone, leaving nothing but a few snowy tips. But even in the best case scenario, the mountains will lose pretty much all of their ice. This is because glaciers have a delayed response time to global warming. What we've already done to change the temperature on Earth hasn't fully taken effect yet. By the time the increased temperature catches up to the glaciers, it'll be too late to do anything, and they'll melt away. What this means for you is that you better book your ski vacation to the Alps while you still can. The French Alps, the Swiss Alps, and the Italian Alps go and see all the Alps and do all the skiing before they're gone. Have you ever been to any of these Alps? Let me know in the comments below, and while you're at it, leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. The Great Barrier Reef The Great Barrier Reef, the most famous and important reef in all of the world's oceans, is about to be dead. According to an in-depth report from the BBC, Australia's Great Barrier Reef has lost over half of its coral since 1995 because of rising ocean temperatures. This means in less than 30 years, half of the Great Barrier Reef has been killed. Scientists also discovered that the steepest fall in coral happened in 2016 and 2017, during mass bleaching events that basically wiped every living coral in the area off the map. Today, corals in the Great Barrier Reef have a pretty grim outlook for the future. Bleaching happens when the corals get stressed out and the algae are driven away. The algae are what give the coral their color. Without the algae, they are basically dead in the water. Corals can recover eventually, 
but only if conditions in the Great Barrier Reef return to normal. This is unlikely to happen, and even if it did, healing the Great Barrier Reef would take decades, and we would never see the results in our lifetime. It's recommended that you visit the reef now while there are still a few corals and fish left to see. Number 5. The Dead Sea The Dead Sea is currently shrinking. It's also pocked with over a thousand sinkholes, some of them being up to 60 feet or 18 meters deep. These sinkholes are the physical evidence of the environmental catastrophe. The Dead Sea shrinks, and as it does, the freshwater aquifers recede too. The freshwater interacts with salt deposits underground, causing the surface to collapse with no warning. In the past 15 years, hundreds of sinkholes have swallowed chunks of road, pieces of fields, and even buildings. Experts are saying that hotels along the shore of the Dead Sea are now in danger of being the victim of sinkholes. The only good news is that if you get swallowed by a sinkhole, they will name it after you. The business moguls around the Dead Sea know exactly what's going on. It's why they have created a huge artificial pool in front of the many hotels near the Dead Sea. A reservoir has been maintained since the 1980s, used for pumping water from the northern part of the Dead Sea to the southern part, then extracting minerals like bromide. This process has hastened the Dead Sea. It also tricks tourists into not realizing how empty the lake is. The Dead Sea was actually once part of a much larger lake that went all the way to the Sea of Galilee, but the outlet evaporated about 18,000 years ago. This left a very salty residue across the desert basin, creating the lowest point on Earth at 1,300 feet or 396 meters below the sea level. This salty body of water has since been known as the Dead Sea and has maintained itself relatively well for the past almost 20,000 years. Fresh water is brought to the lake through rivers and streams, keeping it fairly level. The Dead Sea began dying in the 1960s, when Israel built a pumping station that diverted all the Dead Sea's most precious water sources. Ever since, it has been shriveling up and dying. Number 4. Nauru Nauru is the smallest independent republic in the world. It's a Pacific island that has gone through many changes in the last few years. Decades ago, the island republic had a wet season and dry season. Today, the island is completely unpredictable, with droughts lasting up to eight years and storms that are nearly intense enough to flip the island like a loose scrap of paper. The coastline is gradually eroding and the sea has literally risen up to people's front doors. Nauru is part of the Alliance of Small Island States. The alliance has been trying to shame countries like India, China, and the United States for contributing too much to global warming and causing their island nations to sink. But alas, their pleas for help have mostly gone ignored. And this is sad for the people of Nauru who don't have anywhere else to go. It's like living on a deserted island, and the deserted island keeps getting smaller and smaller. The highest point of Nauru is only 200 feet, or about 60 meters above sea level. And considering how small the island is, it might be difficult for its 10,000 inhabitants to shelter together on the highest point. Eventually, the entire island will be gone, and the few inhabitants will need to be put in a boat and taken somewhere new. Number 3. The Pyramid of Saqqara The oldest pyramid in Egypt is being destroyed by the very people who are trying to restore it to its former glory. The oldest pyramid in Egypt is, of course, the Pyramid of Dosaret at Saqqara. It is being ruined by the company hired by the Egyptian government to restore it. This is shocking, seeing as the pyramid has been standing strong for 4,600 years. When an earthquake hit Egypt in 1992, the structure became compromised, but it is still standing. Egyptian activists are now claiming the company trying to preserve the pyramid does not have the experience needed to be undertaking such important work. In fact, the activists have launched a campaign against the Minister of Antiquities, claiming a crime is being committed. There have been accusations thrown around of robberies, and activists are saying that the company is trying to rebuild the pyramid as if it were a modern structure, adding too much weight and putting it at risk of collapsing. Right now, the Pyramid of Saqqara is still standing, but for how much longer? Nobody can truly say. Number 2. The Amazon Rainforest in 2020, the deforestation of Brazil's Amazon rainforest surged to the highest ever since 2008. 
From between August 2019 and July of 2020, 4,281 square miles, that's 11,000 kilometers, of rainforest were destroyed, according to a report from the BBC. This was an increase of 9.5% when compared to the previous year. Scientists are saying the losses incurred in the Amazon jungle have accelerated ever since Bolsonaro became president of the country in 2019. This guy has encouraged activities such as agriculture and mining to continue inside the rainforest, and it is these very activities that caused the forest to be torn down. Though, of course, 2020 was nothing compared to 2004, when deforestation was almost three times as bad, with nearly 12,000 square miles or 31,000 square kilometers of rainforest being destroyed. At the end of the day, the Amazon rainforest is not a renewable resource. It will eventually collapse when enough of it is torn down. And by 2100, it won't be surprising if the Amazon jungle looks more like Central Park. Number 1. Flooded History Zugma was an important city in the Roman Empire. It was also a very important hub on the Silk Road, linking the empire with its many trading partners in Asia. Unfortunately for all those living in Zugma, it was invaded and destroyed by an earthquake, then abandoned, then lost to time. It was originally founded by the commander Seleucus I Nicator from Alexander the Great's army in 300 BCE, before being conquered by Rome in 64 BCE then being invaded by the Persians in 253 AD, and ultimately being wiped out by the earthquake right after that. What's really fascinating is that many of the buildings discovered in Zugma, which by the way is located in modern Turkey, look very similar to the buildings that were found in Pompeii. Both towns have been buried and preserved thanks to a natural disaster. In 1987, smugglers of antiquities alerted the nearby museum that they had discovered something special buried near a riverbank. They had discovered a buried Roman villa with beautiful mosaics still intact and some household goods still scattered around inside. But then, disaster struck. Only a few small archaeological digs got started before the Turkish government decided they were going to dam the River Euphrates, located around 1 mile or 1.6 kilometers from the ancient city. The city was flooded, the mosaics were covered in water, and if it hadn't been for a rush of help from institutions from America and Europe, who quickly recovered the incredible mosaics as the water flowed over them, they would have been lost forever. Luckily, the emergency archaeologists did manage to get a lot of the ancient evidence away from the water, preserving the 2,000-year-old mosaics for posterity, though today the site is completely flooded. Thanks for watching. Which of these places would you want to visit before they're gone? Let me know in the comments and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more amazing videos.